Howard Lindzen is the founder and general partner at Social Leverage. All opinions expressed by Howard and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Social Leverage or StockTwits. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for decisions. Guests may maintain positions and securities discussed in this podcast. Hi, you're watching Linsanity. I'm Howard Lindzen. Today, very special guest, my friend and founder of Koifin, Rob Koifman. We're going to talk about his product. Welcome to the hot seat. You are on Linsanity. Hey, Howard. How does it feel? Feels great. Great setup. So where'd you buy that shirt? Uh, I think... Um, Is it a gift? Uh, it's my fi- f- now wife. I actually got married recently. My wife bought it for me uh, hey. from Banana Republic. Okay. Where'd you guys do your honeymoon? Uh, we. It was just a like quick, unofficial. We haven't done anything yet, so... Congrats. This Thank is you. Rob uh, Koifman, and uh, we social leverage. Just full disclosure, we are investors in your company. Yes, you are. Uh, and Rob, tell us a little bit about Coifin. Uh, so Coifin, we are building analytical tools for investors, uh, basically giving people the ability to really understand what's going on in the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way we do that is we give them a lot more and better data than what most people have, like from Yahoo Finance or some of the other websites. Um, we also have fundamental data, valuation data, macro data, so everything's in your fingertips. Uh, and it's really easy to access that data, so via dashboards, via graphing, uh, so um, you can uh, access the uh, fundamentals really easily, build the charts, uh, so very easy to go from data to information. And uh, inspiration, let's let's go back to the background. Um, we'll show the product in a little bit. Yeah. The How old are you? I'm 38. And where were you born? I was born in Ukraine, Chernov- yeah. Chernovtsi. Chernovtsi? Chernovtsi, yeah, Chernovtsi. yeah it's a that's, big city. That's where Mila Kunis is from. And oh, she is. Fun fact. Yeah. The uh, how old is she? Uh, around my age. Is there a Ukrainian Tinder? <laughs> I'm sure. Well, Tinder's global. So I understand, the, but is there a the, Ukrainian version? I have. I am not sure. Ukrainian meets Ukrainian. There okay. The and is it close to Bulgaria? Uh, it's closer to Romania than Bulgaria. And it's huge on the risk map. It's a huge place. It, it it's, it's, uh, takes a lot of soldiers, a lot of armies to occupy it. And how did you escape? Uh, m- m- Do you it, escape Ukraine? My parents uh, left Ukraine in 1986, and t- I did not have a choice. I was six years old. So No, I know, but how did they leave? How did they leave? Uh, so as uh, Jews, you have to go through a long process, and they applied to leave in the late 70s, mm-hmm. and then the border got closed. And so they had to live in Russia for a long time. Uh, with other people knowing that they want to leave Russia, which was a big, so they were called uh, refuseniks because they were refused uh, permission to leave. So that was like a big problem for them. Wow. And then they left in 1986. And landed where? Uh, In in Brooklyn, New York. And so do you have brothers and sisters? I have an older brother, yeah. And what business is he in? Uh, He does medical testing. In the States? In New Jersey. So you come to the States. uh, Was your dad an entrepreneur? Uh, Nope. Dad is an engineer. And so you're a bit of a geek. Uh, it's in the blood. I've seen you work. You're I'll, a geek. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah. Now now they're called data scientists. That's <laughs> gross. Are you a data scientist? I think what I used to do is considered data science now, like like data, like Excel and statistical stuff. And um, I had to learn SAS at one point, which is like a... So let's work back to the past. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're a bit of a geek and you go to school. Where'd you go to Ru- school? Rutgers University. In New York. In New Jersey. In New Jersey. State University. Good school. Yeah, pretty good school. Top thousand. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely top thousand in New Jersey. (laughs) And uh, you get out of school, and what do you do? Uh, I came in as a pharmacy major. Wow. Yeah, so... uh, Explains the shirt. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> I yeah <laughs> legal drugs <laughs> yeah. um and I was a pharmacy major and uh hated it my first semester um and wanted to switch into business and that's what I did so I switched into finance and minor to math and so first job out of college first job out of college was in uh, Goldman Sachs research so how did they uh manipulate you to come there uh <laughs> they, they recruited record they did not so yes. i i uh so, you lied. so i basically there was uh it was super hard to get from Rutgers to wall street mm-hmm. uh but they there were a couple of alumni and they offered this program called the rep program um the, what, what? the, the rep, uh rucker uh rep uh, uh rep. Rutgers, okay. uh something exposure program uh part of a group called libor little investment bankers of Rutgers. Oh like my that God. Uh, that's so derogatory that's, <laughs> is it 
because they're little. little. Investment yeah. banker? <laughs> yeah, ju- junior investment banker. Okay. Rutgers. So if you basically interned for free for a year and you did a good job, they would hire you. So my junior year, I basically interned for, for free at Merrill Lynch. And so you started Goldman? Yep. Right, basically right out of college? Right out of college, yep. And so how many – I mean, obviously, we, we don't like backing people from Goldman. So what, So how many years were you at Goldman? There's a number where you have to be less than. Uh, what do you mean? How many years were you at Goldman? Six. I think you lied. I lied on my resume? You're fact-checking? I'm, I'm fact-checking post-due diligence. 2002 You've to – never backed someone who stayed there that long. 2002 to 2008. And did they treat you well? Uh, yeah, I had two jobs there. My first job, uh, absolutely loved it. It was a research job. Uh, probably because my I, I had a really good manager, and then my second job uh, did not get along with well, my manager. Yeah. So what was what you were in research? The, the whole first time? job was research. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started in uh, research for real estate, mm-hmm. and then moved to portfolio strategy, which is covering the entire market. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, moved over after five years to uh, prop trading in London, so proprietary trading. So you, yeah, I know you lived in London. Was that so? W- what's your favorite city uh, in the world? Yeah. Uh, my favorite city in the world. Uh, can I pick a country? I love Thailand. Thailand's a great. Like Thailand. I love Thailand. All right, we well, can't move until you sell the company. What? <laughs> so at Goldman, uh, did you like working in London? I did not love London. I liked the experience, but it's it's like a little. It was a little like uh, foreign to me. Like it's okay. There's a lot of difficult things about London. And so, do you think people treat you differently when you s- do you drop Goldman a lot, or do you do people act like? Do you think that helps you or hurts you? Uh, I think it definitely helps. I think okay. people respect. I still respected it more. No one befo- just swung at you. Uh, uh, w- uh, no one. No. I think okay. you're the only. You've never p- been embarrassed. Th- when you've never been embarrassed to say I worked at Goldman. I think you're the only person that really like. Well, uh, I'm the. It's. It all, all trends start with one person, don't they, Charlie? <laughs> It takes one person to, move, to start a movement. That's right. But like, when did you decide that I want to start a business? Uh, it was three years ago, so about ten years after Go- after I left Goldman, so 2016. So oh, so you left Goldman in oh oh eight. Yeah, and then what did you do in between? What were the uh, dark years? I I was um, at Citigroup for three years, okay, doing uh, options and ETFs, right? Uh, and then I was at several hedge funds, and and so at the hedge fund, you decided a burning desire to start a company? Uh, no, so I was at a, a, a hedge fund called Techni Capital, which is a tech-focused fund. Mm-hmm. I was doing stuff that was um, uh, related to like macro and options and all the stuff that wasn't tech-related. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the fund uh, wasn't doing that well. Right. Um, and, and so they said, we both kind of decided that they have to focus on tech. So I started looking at other things. Um, I started trading on my own much more, started doing my own research, uh, want to put out a research product for investors. So I wanted right. to kind of like uh, keep my ideas fresh, start writing a product. Um, and when I started to do that and using the tools available to me. you didn't have Bloomberg anymore. I did not have Bloomberg anymore. And so when the, I started that's to. That's the big bang. You just, you didn't have your $20,000 blankie. Bloomberg is is super powerful, but. You wouldn't turn off the, if you, if I gave you 20 grand a day to spend on anything financial, would you spend it on Bloomberg? Um, if it weren't my money. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay. So it's that that's the I mean, hold they wait, have wait, on the industry. Wait, now I have Coifin, so I, I don't need Bloomberg. Well, so you didn't no, no, no. answer that at first. <laughs> no, it was no, a trick I, question. Uh, I think Bloomberg is super powerful if you know how to use it. Yeah. And and what percentage of Bloomberg do you think people use? And we'll get into like the tricks and everything. So Bloomberg is everything for everyone on Wall Street. Uh-huh. So the average um, person. We're the only ones that can afford it. Yeah. Uh, so so just like to, to set the, the landscape. Um, there's 300,000 Bloomberg terminals in the world, yes. right? So mm-hmm. uh, it's a super small portion of investors that have a Bloomberg. Right? Right. So there's 200 million people in the world that are investing in the stock market globally. 200 million? And globally. Um, okay. In the U.S., it's about 50 million. And okay. so a very small portion of people have a Bloomberg. So you want to trade on your own. You put out a research crazy product. To, you put out a research product. Um, what were you using? Uh, so I started using like interactive brokers to trade, which sure. is great to trade, but not for research. And um, I started uh, using like you know ETF dot com and huh. uh, economics dot com and huh. Yahoo Finance. So, Google so you were Finance. kind of macro. So, so it was kind of macro, and then for for the stock like TradingView, I thought was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a new product at the time. 
um, I I got a subscription to uh, like Cap IQ and Money dot net and that's expensive and and yeah Cap IQ is uh, expensive. Cap, it's expensive, but uh, I thought like can how I, much a month? Um, their um, their entry version or their low version is probably about eight hundred or a thousand bucks a month. That's real money. That's real money. But you know, I thought I was I wanted like a start a business, okay. so I was willing to make that investment if I Got if it. I liked it. And the business being investing on your own, investing on my own and putting out research. Okay. So seeing seeing if I could get like some subscribers and, and an audience and stuff okay. like that. Um, I was using uh, I tried money.net and I tried white charts, and I just thought that there's so much um, functionality that's missing. And uh, the user interface with all these systems was like super old. It was super antiquated. It was kind of like Web 1.0. Horrific. Uh, and really difficult to learn. Um, a lot of the analytic systems, they give you data, and then they're like, oh, just put it into Excel to do this or that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to put it into Excel. I just want you I'm to give, you me, 800 like, a month. give, you give me the functionality, right? Yeah. So um, that was something I was super frustrated with. And just started researching, like, why is it the case that there is kind of Bloomberg on one side and Yahoo Finance on the other side and not a lot of stuff in the but middle. explain why it is the case. So I think... Not up, to invite competition, it's hard. Yeah, but like, no, I, I think up until recently, um, data was was uh, less of... A, data was much more difficult to find and get. So, for example, for fundamentals... Um, you really had uh, only Bloomberg and Reuters uh, that were selling fundamentals. And if you wanted fundamentals, you had to hire 10,000 people to go input them or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, over the past 10 years, as uh, fundamentals, as companies have had to file electronically, that data has been become more accessible. Mm -hmm. So there's there's companies now scraping filings, offering that data. So that's kind of leveled the playing field of, of, of fundamental data, for example. Um, we get our data. We still pay. Uh, fundamental data is probably our highest cost right now mm -hmm. uh, because we get it from Capital IQ. You so want it clean and you want it. We want to clean stuff it, like that. And you want it trusted. We want it clean and trusted. So mm -hmm. so we really spend um, on, a, on a premium source there. But um, but that's why startups don't exist, Cap IQ. These guys have monopolies on. Th th these guys have monopolies. So now it's easier to, to find the data. But really what Bloomberg and Reuters did was they increased the price point every year. Uh, kind of like driving that that wedge between affordable and and premium, um, and there was no one in the middle that that really had the data or really built anything. So so it just happened because Bloomberg was raising prices. It was, it was Bloomberg. It was it's, it, it's a duopoly. Uh, they were raising prices. They were definitely uh, adding functionality. But you know, Mike Bloomberg is the fourth richest man in the world mm -hmm. because he's got a very profitable business or mm -hmm. in the U.S. Whatever. It's incredible. With three hundred thousand customers. With three hundred thousand customers, it's paying tw paying twenty five thousand each. And what's so interesting, and I've attacked this industry. Uh, with my own small amounts of capital and voice, but uh, it's an amazing company. It's a great company. I love when I get pitches. Oh, we're going to be the next Bloomberg. It's ridiculous. And no one's going to be the next. Yeah. Only Bloomberg can be Bloomberg, yep. is what I say. And he's not interested in that be happening. Yep. <laughs> um, so I didn't know the way. So it's just interesting. The middle just got left because people were late. Just no one really had the vision or cares to try. Or a lot of people have tried and be left yeah. on the side of the road. So, so, so I'd say. Um so, so I'd say the uh, the premium providers like you know Bloomberg and Reuters they they went up they had no incentive to go down. Mm -hmm. um, recently, as I mean, you got to remember that uh, retail investing took off in ninety nine ninety nine two thousand right. So you really like up until then there was no reason to go middle market or, or mass market. Yeah. Um, and you've definitely had companies since then that well that, Yahoo did a good job in ninety nine two thousand. Yahoo did a good job, and I'd say other companies. Um, um, you know, Y charts and Seeking Alpha, they, they've yeah. definitely carved out yeah. uh, a nice business kind of uh, servicing more more uh, mass market uh, and tools. And full disclosure, we, in 2009, we were investors in Y charts as right. well. Right. Um, and so, but, you know, I... <clears throat> I didn't think anyone innovated on kind of the um, the data visualization, the graphing, really the didn't. analysts, and, and, and that was kind of like my insight and my strength from... Uh, from prior jobs is is focusing on that sort of stuff. And I said, that's kind of why I want to try it. Yeah. So how are you attacking? What angle did you choose to attack? So, uh, you know, we we kind of said, like, where can we, um, where can we make the biggest splash? And um, where we can make the biggest splash is really make a highly functional product with great data mm -hmm. uh, and make it available for free. Yeah. Uh, and that's... The All right, so let's... And, and so... Anyway, so I discovered you through Alex Darhini, he's yep. a .72, he's a young guy, he's a VC, yep. Stevie Cohen's fund. 
um, and he's a good friend. And he introduced me to you, and I was like, I loved it the minute I saw it. I, I, I didn't understand the name. I still don't understand that, but I got a koi pen. Okay, so I'm not going to bring that up today. <laughs> and I love it. Uh, so let's just pull up the site. This is us, me logged in. This is actually uh, my watch list, and we don't have to go through it, but you can kind of, if you're watching and not listening, you can kind of spend time seeing the kind of stocks that I follow. I'm a momentum person. But what I love about Coifin, me personally, is what I loved about TweetTech, what I loved about, because I'm not, a, I never could afford a Bloomberg, hated Yahoo Finance. Yep. Don't, don't pay for walls. I don't want to pay for anything. Yep. But I will pay for stuff. We're learning in this environment, whether it's Netflix or, or Spotify, I'm paying. Yep. And in finance, I'll pay more than I pay for anything. I believe that people should pay for financial services, uh, especially data. I'm not against paying for data. I'm just, I, I think it should be a little more accessible. So what makes Coifin so interesting to me is the first time I saw it, I was like, wow. I mean, I'm not into fundamental research. I'm not into macro research. I don't care what the bonds are doing. Uh, but I could see how other people would like to see their data organized mm -hmm. like this. So um, it took me a while to get on board, but I was using the product very early. So, so here's my watch list. What I think is really cool is you, you, you've been really adaptive at listening to guys like me who only really use, only have one unique way at looking at the mm -hmm. market. I don't want to learn, I'm 53 years old, I don't want to learn a new way to look at the market. So I have my watch list. I don't know if it's good the way I do my things, but I have my habits and I want them. And I, should, I believe other people should be able to copy my habits. Yep. So, so part of like the whole social thing for me, and, and you don't listen to me on all features as you shouldn't because I'm not product, but like you have this ability to um, understand a thousand people telling you unique. I didn't have this ability, but you have this ability to like take a thousand ideas of mine and trying to cherry pick which ones actually make sense. So what I think is unique of all the things, there's a million things unique about Coifin, is that I came to you and said, shouldn't people be able to just see my watch list? Mm -hmm. I used to ask StockTwits to do this, and I've asked everybody to do this. Yep. But you somehow made it a way that I can, and if you sign into Coifin, uh, and just hit me up on email, and I'll share my dashboard with you. Meaning, I should be able to look over the shoulder of other traders, period, end of story. Yep. I know that sounds crazy to someone while well, we have proti propri proprietary data. Uh, why would I... That's, I make that makes sense to me. If you're charging two and twenty, yep. you know, fuck off. I don't want to share my list. But me, I don't give a shit who's following yep. me. Uh, I don't. It doesn't not going to affect my returns, at least in my opinion. Yep. Um, so I believe people. Should, it's like Twitch. I believe people should be able to look over the shoulder. Yep. And gaming has proved it. Uh, and well, yeah, gaming, Twitch, and so I think Twitch for finance kind of matters at mm -hmm. some level. Yep. It may not be the massive global level uh, at the size of, of gaming, but markets are a game. And so I think you're the first that I think has done it well. Is I should be able to look over Howard's dashboard and see what it, I like Howard. Yep. You know, see what you're doing. See what you're doing, or see what I'm looking at. Yep. If you peer through a product that I'm looking at. I think that's cool. Yep. That's my Peloton thinking. So yeah. Is that, did that resonate with you or is that, am I wrong? A absolutely. Okay. So, so I think uh, such a critical part of investing is, uh, is the discussion and debate around investments and mm -hmm. kind of like seeing like, hey, what do you like? Why do you like it? Does that uh, jive with what I'm thinking? And if not, wh why is that? Um, so we wanted to think about like how do people do that? And the way we thought about it is around dashboards or groups of stocks uh, that you put together, whether it's thematic or uh, it's your kind of long list or your short list. Mm -hmm. um, and you could choose the columns here however you want to look at the columns with a yeah, different view. Yeah, I mean, it's so, so powerful. We're not going to so, get So, so we're not, we're not get the function. So, so, so the, and there is, if you go to Coifin, there's tutorials and, uh, and whatever. Hit us up on uh, Twitter absolutely. or something. So, so, the, um, uh, so the thinking here is that uh, you create something. You've created content here. You want to share it with other people. You want them to comment on it. We should make that real easy with one click of a button. And that's yeah. what we did. And is anybody doing that? Uh, does Bloomberg do that? So Bloomberg does it, uh, but you have to have a Bloomberg to, to obviously, obviously. But they do do it. So, they so have it's, features so, like this. So, so it's so it's kind of like a walled garden kind of system. Yeah. With, with us, you could just anyone could do it, and obviously. And um, I don't, we're not going to show a demo here, but uh, what's really cool because I never had search, you know, I get I get search. Yep. Uh, I don't use search the way people, normal people should use search. Yep. I peck away at things and like, I, I watch my wife do search and she types in like the whole word, like a sentence and <laughs> two sentences and it works and i like, it kind of works for her. I type in one word yeah. and see what happens. Uh, the way you've created search, why, why does finance, why do they, why do they, is search the key? 
So the way a Bloomberg works is there's no menu. You type everything. Yeah. So it's like because they were created in the is eight, that is that old or is that just the yeah, best way did, to do did it? Did you ever use MS DOS? Do, no, no. It freaked me out. Okay. <laughs> like, that's why Windows is as big as it is. Okay, so, it freaked out most so, people. So MS-DOS back in the day, you had to type the command. So if yeah. I wanted to change folders. That's why I like CoinMine, which is, like, is we're investors in. It's like it's taking something that there's no way I care about crypto. But the fact that it's, it's easy. I'm making it yeah. uh, in my in-laws' house, it's, yeah. you know, on their dime is right. interesting. Right. So, so the way Bloomberg works is you have a command line and you like start typing what you yeah. want. So if I want this, I'd have to like know the command and type yeah. it. It takes a really long time to learn that process, but once you actually know the commands, it's, fucking it's super fast. You're yeah. just like, and that's what you grew up doing, and that and that's what everyone on Wall Street who is a bloomer grows up doing. And Charlie, did that's what you did too at some point, right? Yeah. Yep. And the, there, there is no menu, so there is no kind of like, oh, I just want to browse. Like you, I didn't have a Bloomberg, and I, and, yeah. and and the first time you encounter Bloomberg, if there's no one there, you're just like, I don't get it. What do I do? Got it. Because <laughs> it's just like a, a blinking cursor. Wow. And no, uh, now there's set layouts and stuff. N- no, now it's your the, first uh, time. If you pay t- two thousand a month, your first thing actually, is a DOS no, flashing s- s- screen. Sorry, you, they they do have menus now, but shouldn't it's, it just come but, with but, like but it's a the, bucket of gold? And but, like but the some main the main function. Is still, is still the uh, wow. is, is still. Yeah, the I'm friends with a lot of people there, and I, 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 if I had the money, or if the Bloomberg said, "Howard, we love you, we're going <laughs> to give you Bloomberg." They don't even give Trump. You know, they don't give anybody. No, no one. Yep. No one gets it for free, um, which is genius. Yep. Uh, in its own right, um, and I don't want to talk about Bloomberg. But I, I love the company. Yep. I, I love everything about the way they've cornered the market, and about the elegance and smart the stu- and the silliness and the. The behavioral tricks and all the other things that they do. Very smart. Mark, for, first social just, network. They are the first social. So so, smoking was the first social network. People would just smoke and stand around the campfire okay. and go, oh, "We're smoking." Okay. So that was the first one. I mean, there was this no was typing. The, it was just, "Oh, you're a smoker." Right. And then Bloomberg is the f- literally the first social network. The first social yep. network, and it didn't start out as a social network. It started as a unique data set. It it, it, it started out. Bloomberg Chat beat mid as when it became a Bloomberg a cor- social network. Correct. Meaning. I have enough money to be in the network. Yep. Uh, if I pay, I'm in. Yep. I probably can say whatever the hell I want. Do yep. they kick people off for behavior? Uh, no, but the so the uh, within the so what happened was um, you started getting these rooms with like hundreds of people in the room, mm-hmm. and so because uh, if you're paying two grand a month, how do you complain? They kick, they don't want to w- kick w- you out. Well, so what would happen is someone would uh, see something shady, like oh yeah, I just met with this guy and he told me like whatever. Oh. So it'd be a compliance violation, yeah. and then all the two thousand people would be tainted by that comment. Oh my goodness! And so the regulars would come in, and then and it, so it became oh a goodness. huge so, compliance. I mean, that, but that's a moat in a in that's its own a, way. It's a moat. Meaning it's a headache. It's a headache. That becomes a moat. It becomes a moat. Yeah. So, so okay. But so you have to be on Bloomberg to be part of this chat universe. My uh, personal opinion is whenever people talk about Bloomberg and they say Bloomberg uh, has this monopoly because of chat, I, I think don't. I think chat is way overrated. And yes. chat like, way overrated uh, so because you can chat on. Otherwise, that company that's raised hundreds of millions of dollars, whatever the hell it's called, Symphony. Yeah. Joke. <laughs> I hate to say that because I don't know, but I mean, if you're building a company around chat, yeah, forget it. If that's your vision, what about Slack? Well, they're not doing it for finance. They're not doing that. That's your card. Right. And they started with a unique yep. uh, attack. It didn't start out as like no, what it was going to be. And, they and didn't it, think it was going to ever be that. And by the way, it was a pivot. And, but, Slack was a pivot from a gaming company. Yeah, and I think their genius is integrating with all the other Absolutely. tools, which is, I, I don't which even is, know. Which is more than And chat. by the way, I don't use Slack. It's okay. the greatest thing in my life when I left Stocktwits and Lo- me and the CEO said, like, what the fuck are you on our Slack channel? You're not. You're not. <laughs> yeah. Like, Lo- Rupert Murdoch can't be on the Wall Street Journal right. Slack. Right, and it was a great thing he did for me. It was like Slack's an addictive product. It like, is. How? I kind of worry about it. Like Takes chat is unproductive at many levels. It is. It is. I think so. Now there's a I feel my life's better that I'm. You know, I I I am back to uh, Twitter finally allowed me to do chronological, which means I don't care about the news. I never cared about news until Twitter fucked with my algorithm mm. and made me see a home screen. Mm. Then all of a sudden, I'm just seeing shit that they wanted me to see. Right. They were programming me. Now the Twitter, and I, it's not good for their business to have me in chronological order, but I like going into Twitter and seeing something completely unrelated to today's news. Right, right. Meaning somebody blurting out something right. about something. It should be your choice. It should be my choice. So I think that was a great move by Twitter. Yeah. I think it's four years too late, but hey, let's let's see. Maybe not good for their business, but chronological to me, just that's the market. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see things in chronological terms. And when I decide to sip from the higher fire hose, give, don't tell me what happened 10 minutes ago or tell me what's, you know what I mean? I yep. want to see what's happening now. Absolutely. 
And I think that's still Bloomberg's genius is about the way they organize around the stream, which yep. is what stocked when I saw when I saw Twitter. I'm like, I'm just going to do that for finance. It's never going to be Bloomberg, mm -hmm. but it's going to be real right. and it's going to be time stamped and right. you can't delete it and, you know, worry about it later. So now that you've got, let's go back to the dashboard. So we have the dashboard. Yep. Uh, it's free. So you it's can go free. to Coifin and yep. get it for free. And it's a, it's a magical, beautiful product. It's, Even, a, it's an elegant product. Just to, It's like art on my screen. Meaning this is, when this is, the markets are open, this is dancing. And we love, even if we're not trading, it just makes us feel it's art. The, the reason, that, yeah, the flashing. I don't need to even see flashing. Okay. I just want real time. And I want to be able to just yep. see prices. To me, prices yep. are what matters. Yep. So uh, do, you, do you use the command line? The top, the command? I love line? the command line. Okay, cool. I'm not using it the way it needs to be used. Because yeah, yeah. I don't really care about financials. Got it. But I love that it's built for so, me. I so love that I have something that I could use. Yeah. And it's very powerful. And people that work with me, Danny, uses yeah, the it. The command And they want to teach me. But guess what? I've, I've you, learned you to look at the thing? market this way. I want to know the hottest momentum yeah. stock to give me a snapshot of the market because yep. I don't want to know everything. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not trading for a living. So, so, so Coifin version one was only command bar. Right. Because we were just like, and Maybe you know that's what? why I didn't get you it. You know what? Re retail investors, they just want to type and go fast. And when we put it in front of people, they're like, w like what do you want me to do? Hmm. And we're like, oh, just you type. And it did not catch on But you all. do have the f top 15 clicks or you figure that out. That's a hack. Uh, what do you mean? You know what the top 15 or 20 Bloomberg Oh, functions are from from my own personal Your usage own personal and, and, and you like, recreated those. and we and we we focused on that some more functionality reverse so, engineer let's call it yes. you just kind of assumed what people would want yeah so so it's like you know price chart and looking at fundamentals over time and looking at news okay. and looking at correlation and stuff like that yeah, yeah. so so we talked about that so so how do you attack this when you, you can't charge for this? I mean, we can charge for this. You're not charging for this. We, we will charge eventually. So tell, tell me what you think the strategy is. Um, so the strategy is we are building uh, analytics to analyze data. Um, and those analytics span different segments of investors. And mm -hmm. right now, uh, we're offering those in, uh, analytics to just the broad market, to retail investors, professional investors. Um, and then going forward, we're going to specialize a lot more with both data and functionality. So yeah. if you want to use Coifin for free and you want to use the basic functionality of like charting and and news, you mm -hmm. could always use it for free. Mm -hmm. um, but we will have more advanced functionality like portfolio analytics, like screening, like uh, uh, advanced or premium data like international equities mm -hmm. and that's the kind of stuff that we'll charge for but if you want to use Coifin for free and just focus on the basic stuff we're always going to have a free version and you can't just not be free forever so what is your secret sauce right now obviously you have a team in the Ukraine uh, our dev team is in Ukraine and how easy hard is that most people can't pull this off. Uh, th there's definitely challenges. Uh, we we are very lucky to have the team that we have. And, and what do you use? Slack, Zoom. What do you use? Uh, we use Slack and and Google Hangouts for communications and okay. and stuff like that. So uh, so that's the timing is good because the communication products are almost free. If, if so, so that's another thing talking about timing before um, if six uh, years ago six years ago we, we couldn't have done it because it cost too much for engineers on it, the data it, I, and because I was be burning um, hundred grand a month on data we we were bootstrapping this for a long time yeah. and if we had to hire engineers in in New York we wouldn't be able to do it, this. my view is we, this needs to be attacked there's a moment in time where at least there's a middle that people could go after yeah yep. Google gave up yep they gave up yep maybe they should have. Uh, it sounds like from the hate that the people are so upset on Twitter and stock tweets that they gave up. It's not their business. It's not their business, but there's a business there. Yahoo's. I, I'm sorry. I love. I love the people. Uh, I don't know anybody left. I, I love the people. I do, but it's it's a train wreck. Uh, but it has a lot of views, and it's like CNBC with some data. Mm -hmm. uh, who are the competitors? So our competitors uh, that you see uh, time uh, money. Uh, like, so, so I'd say a lot of people have, uh, like, we're not. I don't think uh, we claim that our product um, helps you predict the future in a better way or gives sure. you a better mousetrap. Yeah. But I think what we do is we bring a lot of data in one place so that you're not looking on different sites for 
bond data or econ data or fundamentals or anything that a fundamental equity analyst would have to look at, both within equities and more macro. So if something happens in Italy or Europe, we'll have probably that data for you to look at the trend and sort of have a a uh, intelligent view on where it is in the 20 year history and where it could go. Yeah, without giving away the secrets, I think what has to happen next, if I live in UK or trade Bitcoin or live in India, I should be able to have global data. Absolutely. So that's coming. That's good. That's, so for yeah. people who are listening in you know, my international audience, yep. uh, don't stress, that's coming. That's coming very soon. Eight, okay. eight weeks. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Uh, what's another big thing that's being asked for that you can do, that you can deliver on? It, uh, that's not giving away too much of a secret. No, no, no. so uh, I'm I'm probably a little more. Uh, it's, it's funny when I started, I was so secretive about everything. I get that, it. I'm not and, saying and, anything. And, and, no, no, and but the more I do this, the more I, I realize. You I know call, me. I'm like, what? Give it away. How, no how hard? Listening. Like how? Like if I, I I can I will give our product roadmap for the next two years. Like I don't care I, because I, it's I super difficult to execute on. Yeah. So and it's not the. Well, actual, someone would have to have the exact same vision. And exactly. So it's actually the UI and the UX, and it's like even our code. Like if someone stole our code, I don't think they could do anything why with is it. Because dark. Why do people care so much about dark mode? <laughs> uh, okay, so two reasons. One is if you have a Mac. Charlie, you use dark mode anything? No. If you is have it a, a young person, if you, if you have a Mac, uh-huh. um, then that's the only reason. No, 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 hold on. Our colors look great on your Mac because it has really high resolution. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a Mac and you have a, uh, oh. a, sh- a crappy screen, mm-hmm. then our colors, the blue, they get all blurry. But even so, on Twitter, or any site. Any side. Any any side. The colors look worse. So so that's number one. And the second thing is um, if you're looking at a screen a lot or in dark and and it's it's bright, it hurts your eyes. So you did launch a dark mode? We launched a dark mode. And it's like like the the number one people are just. Okay. So you never can predict which one. I give a shit. Okay. Uh, So so what what do people want that you really want to build? um, So first of all, we're we're rolling out. our graphing is is really good, but we're going even further and making graphing. Tell even me better. more. <laughs> what? what? So uh, a lot of a lot more uh, technical indicators, uh, more ability to just put the charts wherever you want, so stack them above oh, one okay. another. Uh, so make the, them. make it more net vibey, like go backwards in time and let people put the things where they want. Well, but, Drag and drop the modules wherever yeah, they want. Yeah, kind of kind of like if you want to have four charts on top of each other and okay. different indicators, and if you want to graph. GDP how do you growth. decide when you're giving people too much, or how do you decide when to start charging for the features? Do you uh, have you thought that through yet, or yeah. you don't care yet? It'll. Um, so we, we we're want, well funded, by the way. So if you think you're out there and you can do this again, we're well funded. We um, we we have a, a handful of features that we want to execute on, and after that, we are we're going to charge. So, uh, graphing version two, international equities is mm-hmm. is the other big Key. one. Uh, screening, like a screening tool, that's a big one that people ask us for, and well, uh, especially screening and sharing. Screening and sharing. Why make people come up with their own screens? For, yeah, listen, if people want to come up with their own screen and keep it, they should. Yep. But people who want to screen and share with sixty friends. Yep. So they can all speed up. It goes to Peloton. It's like let people like give it away. Yep. So screening and sharing. S- screening and sharing, and then the last thing is portfolio analytics. So. Big one, I heard. Be, being able to put in um, like your number of shares and seeing kind of what exposure you have to which factors, to which sectors, uh, valuation of portfolio, stuff like that. So just giving people uh, a sense of uh, more color and more intelligence on, on what their portfolio looks like. What about news? Is that impossible to crack or how, how do you deal with we, news? Um, so it's funny. We we have news on our platform. Uh, we always want to have news because you have to have news as yeah. like kind of table it's stakes. Good news. Like, I don't know how you do it, but it's good. Uh, it's our second most used function. Wow. Which is, <sighs> which I would never, and, and so... Uh, People, people. It's want, good when pe- I do check it. I don't know why I check it because I don't pe- care about pe- news. But so, so we've done a lot ticker of ticker news or the macro news. The, uh, more than top news. Our top okay. news. Function, top news. Top news. What's okay. going on? Like top news. Because hey, listen, what, if they're living on your site, you should give them top. Yeah. News. yeah. Um, what I the numbers are staggering. What people are using this site. Like I'm on it all day. Yeah. So, so the dashboards, which is what uh, we looked at before, that's the number one use feature, mm-hmm. and then the second thing is is real news. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what I want to do, I think there's a big opportunity, is uh, taking the the entire Twitter stream and then um, basically analyzing it historically and categorizing different tweets and letting people like look at, like if you look at a chart of uh, Tesla and seeing big moves, I want to put the most relevant tweets on there with 
categorize news news sources. Bloomberg's probably doing that in many ways. Uh, I'm friends with the news guys. They're not doing it quite. And stock twits, you could do it with stock twits. Yeah, too. you the, Bloomberg is doing it to some extent yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, a, uh, my other argument is what the hell is Twitter doing, giving that at any price, letting Bloomberg have the, the feed. Yeah, but I mean, the, what what are they going to do with it? Well, the point is, why give it away at any well, price? Well, it was not, worth more to Bloomberg than tw- than they were willing to pay right, Twitter. Right. Right. But Bo- Duraflame, major, should be in Harvard and Goldman Sachs strategy books. Better <laughs> screwed that deal up. They were trying to meet a quarter, and Bloomberg should not have that data. But what, what's the alternative? Just to keep the data and not charge for it? Well, the alternative is uh, Bloomberg would have to just keep ratcheting up the number if news breaks on Twitter. Yep. And you're paying twenty something hundred dollars a month for your Bloomberg. How valuable is your Bloomberg anymore? Infinity. So what? Anyways, it's it. Uh, you don't think so? You have never thought about that. I, it's it's a if, unless lucky the, for you. Listen, they're going to sell you me. the data L- too, and they're going to under they're going to undervalue yeah. what they sell it for. Yeah, I mean they 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 just don't get it. Yeah, it I, was invaluable to Bloomberg. Yep. And no matter so when no matter what Bloomberg pay, they were willing to pay. Yeah, I mean I think a lot of companies have built a business around uh, analyzing Twitter data. So. I mean, uh, so, uh, but the only one that would pay the most is Bloomberg. Uh, no, meaning just getting the fire hose. Forgetting about analog. I agree with you. Like once you give it away, who cares what Bloomberg does with it? Right. You shouldn't get, you should just be suing them every time they look at the data. Right. Or, or they should have uh, like a thirty-second delay unless you pay us. Like, exactly. A Twitter dollar, right? should have delayed. Right. One hundred and forty seconds or fourteen seconds. Right. Ja- ja- Jack, everybody. if you're listening, yeah. I mean, Fred's <laughs> written about this. He okay. agrees with this. All they had to do. Is you Bloomberg you want it? You have 14 seconds to lie. If not, what is your number? Right. And and then quadruple it. Right. And then quadruple it again. <laughs> and then pay that on a monthly fee. And then we'll <laughs> think about it. That was the play. So what is the, the biggest hindrance for you going forward? It's capital? Uh, look, Time? it's 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 like any any startup. We need, uh, we need capital. We need users. We need employees. All, all the things. But uh, it's good to be nimble. I think we move pretty fast. Do you uh, feel people are getting it? You know what? Over the past six months, uh, there's been a lot of traction. You so. know what? Six months ago, we like it, it was us. It, so it's, it, it's, it correlates with when we started caring. I, I think so. Well, our our um, it was it was it was really odd because like uh, I always had this vision, which we're now finally executing on. And when I first pitched to people, they're like, "You've never well, done this I before." I got it, but I wasn't but, there. You but, weren't there. But yet. We weren't there yet. And then like one year in, people were just like, "I don't get it." And then two years in, people were just like, "I don't get it." And like two and a half years in, so people it's already like, been two and a half years. Oh, I was about kinda, a year and a half where I was like, "Come back to me." I kept checking on you. You kept every checking. You kept hanging around the hoop. Yeah. Well, this hoop is like bugging me, even though I don't care because I don't need to trade every day. I, I stand as far away from this as possible. I think of it as art, and yeah. I, there's a product in the middle that needs to exist. And yeah. It's just fascinating to me that everybody's just slowly just given up. Yeah. So either we're completely wrong, which is fine. Yeah. Like, I'm fine being completely wrong, or no, I, I think well, we got to be completely right. You, yeah. I think I think you're I think your do-it-yourself thesis, like your kind of long-term thesis, that people just want to do it yourself. Um, you know, if someone uh, investors want to research the investments themselves. They don't want someone at Morgan Stanley giving them a rating. They want yeah. to actually dig into the numbers. Well, I think the timing here in your favor, I don't know if you know this, but like the way I think about it, and hopefully I'm right mm-hmm. for your sake, even if you don't care, yep. is that we've never had a moment other than since 99 where all these people were onboarded. So Acorns, Robinhood, yep. Stock Twitch, Twitter, yep. uh, Reddit traders, uh, eToro, uh, Chime Bank, um, uh, on and on. A uh, Coinbase. There's 20 million yep. new investors in the last year. Yep. Say like the, the banks have no net around. Yep. And so you use Robin. So you use eToro. So you use Coinbase. God bless. You should. Everybody's on board. But now they have no tools. Right. And they're not going to open a TD Ameritrade account to trade the Rob. Maybe they will. They're nuts. <laughs> So they got to discover Coifin. So we yeah. got to figure out how to get those onboarded. And not all 20 million are going to survive. Let's say 2 million survive. That's a lot more customers than Bloomberg ever had. Yeah. Uh, but, but, to sell a art, to sell data visualization. Yeah. I, look, I think like Robin Hood. So if I'm talking about to VCs who are listening and don't have their <laughs> act together and, 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 and hit me up and go, what's the total addressable market? It's yeah. fucking mind boggling. Right. What's it's, the total addressable market? It's infinity. It's, 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 it's re- so I think on the, on the low end, I think a lot more users are going to go uh, from kind of your basic Robinhood account of like, hey, I'm just buying 
Uh, well, but keep I'm, it forever, maybe. But they need they're more. Go, they're going to keep Robinhood. They're going to trade through Robinhood. But in terms of understanding what they're buying and why they're buying, and and why it's going down and why it's moving relative to other stocks, they're going to need tools to do that. And that's what yeah. we're going to provide. Um, so that's on the kind of more mass market side. And then we're going to continue to offer more advanced functionality to really uh, solve the problems of people who have the money to pay for it, whether it's yeah, financial advisors land or and expand. land and expand. That's right. All right. So on that note, let's uh, wrap it up. Thanks. That was cool. fun. That awesome. How would you do? Uh, I, I feel great. How do you do, Charlie? They killed it. Gents? Pretty good. Solid job. Pretty good. Cool. Do you get the markets now? Do you understand them yet? <laughs> Better than I did. See, that's the goal. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks, Howard.